Thanks for joining me. Let's spend an hour manoeuvring the Henschel HS129. This video brought to you by a Patreon donation. The Henschel HS129 is an excellent ground attack aircraft, but it has a tendency to ground loop on takeoff and landing. It seems to be built like a pendulum, front heavy and uh, the tail whips around very easily. You can see there I'm applying left and right toe brakes. I've got that set up to my keyboard to the, what do you, I don't know, it's like an arrow that points left and an arrow that points right above, well, on the comma key and the full stop key, or period if you like, the comma and the period key, or comma and full stop key. I've got the those keys assigned to the toe brakes. So here I'm using my joystick to your using the rudder pedals and then you can see also you can use the toe brakes to apply left or right main wheel brakes. You can also apply a brake in combination with uh, left or right rudder or you can apply both brakes at the same time. So there's a great deal of variation there. I've found that unless you're doing say 110 k's an hour or something there's no effect from the rudder. I don't think that's true to real life because you've got all that prop wash from those hundreds and hundreds of horsepower pushing the propeller to push that air back the prop wash over the uh, tail surfaces and that gives you some positive control even when you're sitting still or it should do. But in real, like in the game, in the reality of the game the only thing that you've got to help you uh, if you're not getting on towards takeoff speed is the brakes of the main wheels. I don't think the tail wheel can be locked so it seems to be free castering so you've just got the main wheel brakes and so for the first part of a takeoff I'm still using the brakes. I'm by no means an expert at manoeuvring the Henschel and I actually learned quite a bit just from flying it for this one hour. So come with me on a journey and we'll explore the capabilities of the Hintrip HS 129. By the way, the, um, the wheel brakes are very weak indeed. They're probably not disc brakes or well, I don't know, maybe they're drum brakes, but in any case, they're not strong. The brakes are not strong. It's not like you can lock up a wheel by depressing a brake. The brakes are weak. I would characterise the brakes as weak. So here I'm going to do a circuit I've taken off. Uh, was it into the wind? Not, not entirely into the wind. And I'm going to land into the wind though. Just here I'm sussing out the windsock. I'm zooming in on the windsock and I'm having a look at it so I can see where the wind is coming from. Oftentimes in vids of mine where you see me ground loop it's because I've landed on a runway somewhere, the closest runway after the combat and I've, I've just landed any which way and I haven't looked at the windsock or often enough there isn't a windsock at the airfield and I've just landed and um, as you slow down and the rudder becomes not effective because there's no relative airflow uh, and um, you have no yaw control so um, you can avoid that to a large extent by really proactive use of the main wheel brakes left and right. So this video is brought to you by a Patreon donation. Uh, thanks very much for that. And um, if you want to make a Patreon donation and request a video topic, uh, just um, make the donation and let me know and don't forget to let me know what the theme or the topic of the video is that you're requesting and I'll make it. So the second part of this video in addition to general taxi takeoff landing capability uh, exploration we're also looking at the prop pitch. Uh, these engines have constant speed unit propellers so um, you can adjust the pitch of the propellers. I'm just taxiing up to the windsock here so you can have a good look at the direction the wind's coming from. And you can see how fairly um, tight that landing was in terms of, you, can, you know, there's no real tendency to ground loop. It was a pretty easy landing and it's because I'm more or less directly into the wind. Um, so yeah, looking at the constant speed propellers and how to operate them. 
I've used them in real life on real life aircraft. I've never actually used them in the game. I just use automatic, so it's an interesting thing for me as well to explore the um, variable pitch, um, the manifold pressure, and the constant speed characteristics of the propeller on this uh, aircraft here, the Henschel HS129 ground attack aircraft. I did come up with some conclusions from mucking around for an hour, well half an hour or so with the prop pitch and that is that if you want to taxi with extra control you can set the prop pitch to zero, zero percent and that gives you extra control. Zero percent doesn't mean you have no thrust, you still have thrust but it's like being in first gear in your car, exactly the same thing. So it means you can climb with a lot of torque and it means just like going up a hill in, in a car in first gear to have 0% prop pitch is the same as being in first gear in your car and I found that when I was coming into land I know that I know from real life that you want what's called a very fine pitch for takeoff and landing and it's no different in the game as well when you're coming into land so I'm just going to take off you with a tailwind and you'll see you'll see the result I'm trying to set up the view here so that you can see the use of the toe brakes in particular so you can see I'm using both rudder and toe brakes even up to pretty high speeds I'm still judiciously using toe brake obviously if you use toe brake while you're ta uh, taking off it'll slow you down so you want to be careful how you use it but um, in the beginning of a takeoff run it's essential with the handle and this is with that tail wind it's a, it's a 15 knot tailwind, uh, 17 miles per hour tailwind. I would have actually made that if I had have deployed full or some degree of flap, like 30 degrees of flap probably would have seen me get clear of uh, that peasant's outhouse that I just demolished. <laughs> 15 knots. 17 miles an hour, 28 kilometers an hour, that's the wind for today. The reason why I've set it to 15 knots is um, that's a figure that I know pretty well. Uh, when you fly light, light aircraft, often enough they have a, all, all aircraft have a crosswind component that's been worked out when the prototype's been flown by test pilots and they collect the data of how the aircraft performs. They look at the crosswind component that the aircraft can handle. Generally speaking, the faster and heavier the aircraft, the greater the crosswind component that, that it can handle. This is a very heavy aircraft, and it's a very powerful aircraft, relative, relatively speaking, to say a Cessna or a Piper or something. In any case, talking about light aircraft of the modern times, like a Cessna or a Piper, uh, 15 knots is a pretty standard crosswind component. So that means that with a, a wind at a right angle to the landing path of the aircraft, the crosswind. It can be 15 knots and the aircraft can still land within tolerable safe performance limits. That gets a lot harder if the wind is gusting, if it's a laminar flow or whatever, if it's a if it's a if it's a linear wind, like like if it's a constant velocity crosswind at 15 knots, that doesn't pose much of a problem. If it's a gusting crosswind, then that that's bloody challenging but um, in this game I don't think there's any gusting wind the wind does change with altitude uh, but um, we got a constant wind of 15 knots so as I say the conclusions I can draw from this whole uh, e experiment essentially is that it's really good to set the prop pitch to manual and then adjust it to fine or, or on the on the finer side that and in, in terms of percentages between 0 and 100 percent down towards say 10 percent prop pitch uh, as you're coming into land as you're coming into land set the prop pitch to something like 10 or 20 or, or yeah about that or even less you can set it to zero and um, as you're coming into land you'll have a great deal of um, control you you won't have a tendency to accelerate to high speeds from applying full power 
but you will have all of that engine power on tap ready to go if you need it and um, it seems to give a lot more control when you're coming into land you go slow um, but you go at the appropriate speed for approach a, lo a lot easier things seem to work better that's a conclusion I've drawn just from this uh, one hour and 14 minutes of flying the Henschel coming in with a lower prop pitch a finer prop pitch something like 10 percent prop pitch um, is beneficial for landing and I found that a noticeable difference a really interesting thing then I, I usually just fly with automatic prop pitch automatic engine control in the game and um, yeah the landing seems a lot sort of more controlled and sedate when you've got uh, manual prop pitch selected and then you've selected a finer or a lower percentage prop pitch something around 0 to 10 or 20 I found I didn't really increase the prop pitch above 50 when I was cruising 50% um, so I operated basically between 0% and 50% during the whole experiment with the prop pitch and I found cruising at 50% prop pitch was probably about it, it didn't it was yeah um, I'm not really sure what the best velocity I was getting in terms of prop pitch but I think it probably would have been about 35% prop pitch for the best velocity and here's me trying to taxi in a now I'm across the wind so I'm sort of in a crosswind here trying to taxi and I actually whip around and collect the wing on that set of crates there or on the tower so I'm showing you all my mistakes just to demonstrate um, A, um, I'm not an expert and B, that's how it goes in a crosswind trying to taxi it doesn't have to be that way um, and later on in the vid I pull off quite a few good taxi manoeuvres as I sort of get used to the aircraft more so this is taking off in the Moscow map on the outskirts of the Moscow suburbs this airfield is as close as you can get to the city um, you can't get closer than that the map automatically rejects you back into the uh, the flyable area so here's the engine start and what I'm going to do you can see that I'm on the center line of a runway but I'm facing the opposite direct direction to the runway so I'm going to turn around on the ground under control so I'll do it like I'll taxi around 180 as you can see I've got the drink right in front of me there so there's the runway behind me is Moscow flying the Henschel HS129 ground attack aircraft the aircraft's in clean configuration it's not carrying any bombs or uh, extra cannons it has I think two machine guns and two inboard cannons or internal cannons and what are they? 20 millimeter the Henschel the pilot of the Henschel sat in sort of like a bathtub made of steel uh, or some kind of metallurgy armor plate the pilot sat in a steel bathtub and you're looking at it there that's the steel bathtub that a Henschel pilot would sit in there was such a small cockpit or well maybe they stuffed up the engineering but I doubt that that they actually stuck the, the gun sight on the outside of the aircraft which I think is unprecedented for, for an optic sight to be on the outside of an aircraft there just wasn't enough space inside so cramped was it so here we are that was a 180 there just by using brakes I found the best engine percentage power for taxiing like that was 45 percent you needed about 40 to get you moving but if you had it at 45 you'd definitely get moving but it wasn't too much so I recommend if you're going to taxi the Henschel use 45% throttle this here is prior to commencing the experiment with prop pitch so this is just automatic prop pitch I'm not using the prop pitch at all I'm not adjusting the propellers uh, pitch it's just all automatic um, as the vid progresses then I'll get to um, I'll get to that uh, so here we are doing a circuit on the outskirts of Moscow the suburbs uh, 
I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think there's any wind at all in this particular map. Sorry, in, in this particular rec record on this map. Yeah, for this particular flight, I think I didn't have any wind set at all. Bit of low cloud. So just turning onto the final approach, I've deployed the wheels and there's the flaps. There's the throttle going back. So this particular footage is emphasising how to use the tow brakes, which I'm just testing there when landing. So you can see the windsock there is idle. There's no wind. But it'll still ground loop. This aircraft will still ground loop even in a no wind environment. It just It's a pain in the ass. It just bloody likes to... It's a bit of a mule actually on the ground, but I think many aircraft in, in IL-2 are sort of mules on the ground, even though they're dainty and elegant in the air. You can ground loop anything from a Spitfire to a JU-52. So it was a good topic suggestion, thanks very much, because le learning how to operate on the ground in this game um, for me at least will make me look a lot better because um, I'm always ground looping. I, I seldom go a landing without a ground loop. Uh, I think that's pretty well fixed uh, thanks to this this research here into ground handling. So you can see at, particularly towards the end of that landing run I was using the tow brakes quite a bit and now I'm going to taxi into one of those hangars. So this is where I was figuring out what the best engine power percentage of the throttle was and I figured that it was 45% if you're standing still apply 45% throttle and you'll start moving if you're standing still and you apply 40% throttle you may or may not start moving most likely not but if you apply 45 then you'll start moving once you are moving if you if you've got the wherewithal to do so if you pull it back to 40% throttle you'll still be able to move along nicely and even move a bit uh, left and right with the tow brakes applied without coming to a standstill. So that's the trick to it. I mean, if you, if you apply full left brake or right brake while you've got 45% power and you're just trundling along slowly, I don't think you'll come to a standstill. But if you've got less than 45% throttle and you apply full left or full right brake, just say you want to do a 90 degree turn, with 40% throttle, you may well come to a standstill or, or slow down too much before you can complete the turn. Having said that, if you're trundling along across an airfield, taxiing 200 metres or something, at 45% power, your speed's going to build up and up and up, so you really want to pull it right back to 40 or even just pull it right back to idle to get your speed down. So it's a juggling act, it's like juggling. There's no hard and fast rules, but I, I sort of do have a hard and fast rule for taxiing, which is 45% throttle seems to do it. Gets you moving if you're st stationary and um, allows you to manoeuvre on the ground using the tow brakes. You can try manoeuvring on the ground using the rudder. It just won't, it won't do nothing. Uh, it won't do anything. Which I don't, I don't think that bears. I've never flown a tail dragger in real life, but I think in real life with a tail dragger, like if you're in a Tiger Moth and you apply some some throttle, and um, you're moving along, or you, even if you're stationary, and then you apply full right rudder, I bet you you'll you'll yaw right on the ground. Like there's no need for tow brakes or anything like that. You can just use the rudder to direct the aircraft. Obviously this is not a Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth probably weighs 450 kilos. This aircraft probably weighs, I don't know, uh, 4,000 kilos empty. So it's probably 10 times heavier than a Tiger Moth. Um, but the rudder's still about the same surface area. But you've got hundreds and hundreds. You've got, you've got more than 1,000 horsepower. I'm trying to remember the horsepower figures for this aircraft. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take off again. 
and you can see I'm, I'm taxiing fairly well under control, no ground loop so far. And you can see I've been adjusting the throttle quite dynamically, sometimes a lot, like more than the 45% power. Although you can't see the percentages on the screen when you're flying yourself at home, if you use the I button or the H button key, rather, I or H key on the keyboard, you'll be able to bring up the, um, if you've got it set in the settings, you'll be able to bring up the data panel or whatever, and you'll be able to see a whole bunch of stuff, like what percentage, um, like if you've got in-flight messages set or something like that, um, the system will show you some text telling you what your engine percentage power is whether you know it'll give you status messages whether if you press g to lower the gear or to raise the gear the status message will say gear lowered gear raised um, flaps take off uh, flaps retracted whatever um, so um, unfortunately you can't see that here so i'm trying to narrate it from memory and from what i'm seeing in front of me But yeah, uh, use of the throttle uh, and not really more than 45% and use of the tow brakes. So here's full power. You've, usually when you take off you've got to apply right rudder. I found that that wasn't a hard and fast rule with this aeroplane. Often enough it was left rudder. So there's the tow brakes. As we get up above 100 k's and kilometres an hour, about 60 miles per hour, the rudder does start to have some effect in this game but mind you with full engine power full prop wash even stationary in real life I bet you you'd have a great deal of control from the rudder anyways there we are we're airborne I'm pulling the flaps up I think there and the aircraft's cleaned up quite hard to see the airspeed indicator on this aircraft because it's directly behind or in front, however you want to say it, of the stick. So if you're wondering where the airspeed indicator is in this plane, it's behind the stick. You, you actually pretty much have to move the stick slightly to the left or the right when you want to look at what speed you're doing, which is important when you're coming into land, you, you're looking at your speed, seeing if it's at 200 or 300 or, or less or what have you. So there's the flaps, there's the gear, I'm coming in for another landing. Remember there's no wind in this particular example. In later examples I've got everything set to 15 knots wind and I'll try landing and taking off in, into the wind and also with a crosswind. And you, I think I've demonstrated that pretty well in uh, coming up in, in, uh, in this video. So here's a landing. Engine power goes idle and I'm just sort of floating down and holding off a bit. It's a good plane. It flies well. It's an exciting plane. You're in that armoured cockpit. I would actually feel quite quite uh, quite safe in this plane, I think, flying over a battlefield. I'd be more worried about the engines or the fuel tanks getting taken out or losing a control surface rather than the pilot's uh, armoured bathtub. Um, being uh, being damaged. So there you go, you can see use of the brakes there. Trust me, that's not overuse of the brakes. If I wasn't using the brakes like that, there'd be a ground loop. And I think anyone that's flown the HS can sort of um, appreciate that. So moving on, we'll move on to a more challenging scenario of adjusting the prop pitch and also flying with wind and um, flying with a crosswind. So here we are with a different set of weather conditions. As you can see it's raining and we have 15 knots of wind and depending on how you take off or land that can be a headwind or a tailwind or a crosswind. In these examples coming forth I um, take off into a headwind and I land with a headwind and sometimes I land with a crosswind. I won't, I won't try another tailwind takeoff or landing after the, uh, depart the debacle with the uh, peasant's outhouse getting demolished uh, when trying to take off in that, in that tailwind. 
Yeah, I've put some vehicles moving on the field. They're, I'm going to be taxiing past them in a minute. The tank, the tank actually um, co uh, collides with the control tower, so the tank only goes half the way there because it, it kind of like a dumb insect. It, it gets caught and it can't figure out how to how to get around the object, which is the control tower. So I've got the engines uh, starting sequence happening here, and I'm going to taxi. I'm going to taxi along the, the taxiway there on the outskirts of the field, past those vehicles, and um, taxi to the runway. Look at the windsock, taxi down the runway, and uh, turn around. There's a, I've put a windsock at both ends of the runway. It's a it's an interesting field. You've got a big oval field, which is what on omnidirectional. You can land and take off anywhere, anyhow, on the grass. And in the centre of the oval, you've got an actual runway, which is a bit more substantial. But it's kind of grass, and um, it looks like bitumen that's overgrown with grass. I don't think it's dirt as such. It could be gravel, like compact gravel with grass growing out of it. That's the runway. sitting here with my cup of coffee. So at some point in this experiment I figured out that 45 was the speed necessary to get moving. <laughs> this is at the beginning of that journey. You can see I've just ground looped it. Probably the power was higher than it needed to be and um, I didn't quite get onto the brakes quick enough. It's kind of like heading them off at the pass, the old cowboy saying, head them off at the pass, or a stitch in time saves nine. If you get onto the ground brakes, uh, ground brakes, if you get onto the toe brakes proactively, you can prevent a ground loop exacerbating, getting outsized, getting worse, and fully developing. So it's helpful to look, look forward over the nose towards the horizon and um, keep your fingers on the uh, keys, the comma and the period or full stop key for the tow brakes and um, as you see the aircraft start to sneak right or left you, you can apply some opposite brake and then look for the effect and then follow on from there as, as I'm doing here as I'm demonstrating here you can see the vehicles that I'm going to move past on the right there. There's the staff car. I'm trying to remember what brand it is. It's not a Mercedes. And there's the truck. I think that's a Ford truck. Uh, Hirsch. Or Horsch. And there's the tank. The Panther. Pan Panzer. I think that brand of car is a Horsch. H-O-R-C-H. Something like that. Which I don't think exists anymore. Looks like a luxury car. And as you can see on the windscreen there, there's the rain effects, which I think are pretty good. I really like how the rain is uh, at this time. They've really done it well. Actually gets very cosy flying along or taxiing when you've got the uh, canopy closed and it's raining outside. So here we are coming up to the runway, got a JU-52, got a truck, got an artillery piece, I think that's the fabled 88 on the right there. And there's the windsock. And I'm at, the, I'm at the wrong end of the field and the wrong end of the runway to take off. I could chuck a left and try and take off into the, the, uh, the body of water there. So what I'm going to do is turn right, or try and turn right, and taxi down into the centre of the field. There's actually a runway there. It's a bit hard to distinguish it from the rest of the field. But uh, So that was another ground loop. And now we're, now we're operating with the extra difficulty that there is wind. So keep your rudder and your toe brake into the wind. So I've got a wind from the left, and so I'm keeping left toe brake and left rudder. 
now I've got a bit of it, now I'm turning into a tailwind. And there's an artillery piece that I don't want to hit. Going pretty fast there, if I was doing this again I'd slow down about now. And you can see I've got a, a rank of angels lined up there on the edge of the runway. From up in the sky you can see they're on the edge of the runway. From actually down here it just looks like one big field of, of dry grass. Right, so now I'm taxiing with a tailwind down the uh, approximate centre line of the runway. When I, I do actually skip a bit here so that it's not so monotonous. I think I skipped about two minutes worth and then I got to the other end of the runway characterised by a windsock. There's a windsock at the other end of the runway. And as you can see, I'm not doing too well at this juncture, at this stage, sort of porpoising all over the shop. Um, it requires not too much speed, real concentration, and if I did this again, because this is still set on automatic prop pitch, if I did this again I'd, I'd press right shift P to activate manual prop pitch selection, and then I'd press right shift and minus until I saw that the prop pitch had decreased down to somewhere around 0%, and then I'd have the best uh, prop pitch configuration for taxiing. And I try and keep the speed pretty low. There was another ground loop. So yeah, I mean, it is challenging. I've travelled maybe 200 metres and in that space of time I've done two ground loops. And before I turned onto the runway, I did a ground loop. So that's three ground loops in a space of about 220 metres, which is pretty important. <laughs> but things get a little bit better as I get the hang of it. And the whole purpose of this video is to explore how to manoeuvre, uh, how, to, how to take off, how to taxi with the henchel. There's the windsock signifying the end of the the runway strip so I'm going to turn around and I think from memory I think I did a pretty good job here so I'm turning into the wind and stop yeah not perfect but not too bad so there's the wind so I'm going to take off into the wind remember I've got a whole lot of objects down there that I don't want to hit so here we go full power using the uh, tow brakes again you can see the aircraft wanted to ground loop just there but I caught it. There's that lovely rain effect on the windscreen. Picking up some speed now the rudder's effective. I'm gonna apply some back pressure and I'm up in the air that's a positive rotation and there's the, the other bit so wheels go up. If I had flaps, I'd lift the flaps now. I think I had them clean. I think I lifted, I raised the flaps during that long taxi. In fact, I think one of the ground loops was as a result of me raising flaps, something along those lines. Sometimes that happens. You'll uh, you'll go to do something, and you'll while you're doing it, you'll lose track of what the aircraft's doing, and it'll ground loop. So you only you give it you give the aircraft three seconds while you're taxiing without your eyes on the horizon and, and your, your fingers on the, the uh, comma and uh, full stop period keys and the aircraft will ground loop. It's uh, treacherous in that way. You can minimise that, as I say, by adjusting the prop pitch to zero while you're taxiing and keeping the uh, power at, um, at a lesser setting. By the way, that 45% power that I mentioned, that's with automatic pitch. If you reduce the prop pitch down to zero, you'll um, you probably be able to just about lift it to full engine power um, without, without any dire consequences, because you wouldn't be moving very fast. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to come in for a, uh, a landing into a headwind. So pretty straightforward. And uh, what do I do there? I think I come to a full stop and then I take off again. Let's have, let's have a look.
you can see I pressed F2 just then to go external view and have a look at what I'm doing there is I'm having a look at the aircraft, what it looks like simplistically, seeing that the gear's down, seeing that the flaps are down. I suppose, strictly speaking, I should be looking at the instruments in the cockpit, uh, but it, I mean, in a simulator it's so easy just to press F2, have a look at the aircraft on the outside, make sure the flaps are deployed and the, the gear's down. So there's a landing into the wind. Easy peasy. Japanesey. And I think it's going to be a touch and go. Looks like I'm about to take off here. So it's bouncing a bit. And that's probably the last bounce. Nope, that's the last bounce and then positive rotation. Nothing too difficult about that. It's just a matter of um, being, I don't know, having enough practice with the sequences of uh, things that you need to do in sequence. And particularly having the brakes ready as you come into land, I find is essential. And as you're about to give it full throttle to take off, have the brakes ready. Have, have yourself mentally prepared to apply the brakes in those lower speed segments of the takeoff and in the uh, lower speed or any, yeah, particularly the lower speed segments of a landing. I have to stress that when you're moving fast enough, the rudder has some effect and gives you a great, greater stability. And just the vertical stabiliser um, has a tendency to keep the aircraft more stable at, at um, higher speeds on the ground. But once you get down to like anything under 100 kilometres an hour, you really need the uh, toe brakes because under 100 k's an hour or so, the uh, vertical stabiliser and the rudder are not really providing much stability and much control in this game. As I say, I think it's probably different in real life. In real life, you probably get a lot of control out of the rudder and the uh, vertical stabiliser purely because of the effect of the prop wash running over them, even at uh, zero kilometres an hour stationary on the ground. So here we are coming in for a, another landing. And is it going to be a headwind or a crosswind? It's different. I think this is not entirely a crosswind, but I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to try and make it a full crosswind landing here. I have to go to the left a bit more, but here we go. Yeah, this is a full crosswind landing. See, I'm banking into the into the wind as I'm landing. So there you go, and the trick is to keep it stable. So I'm applying left toe brakes because the wind is coming from the right. And I'm going to take off like this too, I think. So there you have it, that's evidence that you can land a Henshaw HS129 in a crosswind, in a 15 knot crosswind, 17 miles per hour crosswind. Let's turn it around and take off into a crosswind as well. So I'm, how am I doing here? Applying some brake. Whoa! Honestly, I think what happened there is um, I went to I went to retard the throttle and I advanced it instead. Uh, I'm going to look out the windscreen and see, just get my bearings. Can't actually remember if I took off from here or if I uh, taxied up to the windsock. I did something. So there's the JU-52. There's some artillery up there somewhere. There's the... Uh, bank of angels. And there's the windsock. Yeah, this will be a takeoff. So again using automatic pitch but we're into a we're into a crosswind here. The aircraft wants to cock left into the wind. And so um, at the start there you saw I used right rudder to counter that. 
sorry, right, right toe brake rather. Have to be careful around here for objects. And there we go. There's a takeoff into a cross, uh, a takeoff with a crosswind from the left. So I've just demonstrated definitely I can land in a crosswind and I can take off in a crosswind. recorded this last night and I was going to do the uh, this, uh, this, this uh, narration last night as well however Windows 10 did an update and um, that completely shut down the microphone so I was not able to record this narration last night after um, some very frustrating Google searching I found out how to fix up the microphone issue which was which was a direct result of the update and um, that's fixed now, hence the narration today. So I'm a bit rusty on remembering what I was doing when, not entirely, but as only last night. But um, so what, what we're looking at now, uh, again from memory, this this uh, this one's a standard landing into the headwind, the safest, easiest textbook, most appropriate approach to make is into a headwind. So this is into a headwind. I'm going to zoom down here a bit, sort of fancy on the uh, the windsock there, and you'll get a good look at that. There it is there on the left. So the headwind makes it a lot easier to land. The aircraft's ground speed is a lot lower for a different indicated airspeed. So essentially you can touch down at a slower ground speed, which is very useful. Again, with the toe brakes, flying toe brake into the, uh, no, well, as needed I guess, and you can see there I was pulling back on the, con on the control stick, the joystick there, um, with some of the aircraft in this series if you pull back on the joystick it locks the tail wheel, so I was seeing if that was going to happen with this one but there's no indication that it does that, I was also seeing if just having back pressure and um, applying downforce to the, the tail section would increase stability during um, landing takeoff maneuvering and um, it's inconclusive to me I don't know if it makes a difference or not but it was something that I was testing out so look at that wind sockets horizontal so you can see that is a 15 knot wind so that's what a 15 knot wind looks like it's a good headwind to land into it's not such a good wind as a crosswind to land or take off in or even to manoeuvre in. Hope you're enjoying this video so far. This video is the result of a patron, uh, a Patreon donation. Uh, if you have a video topic or theme that you would like to see, send me a donation and uh, let me know what the theme is that you'd like to request and I'll make a video on that theme or topic. If you look at the control panel there's two or, uh, orange lights there sort of evenly spaced they indicate the prop pitch for the left and the right engine and this is the start of my experimentation with the prop pitch. You can hear the engine conking out there. What had happened there is I had increase the prop pitch to 100% while the throttle was effectively at idle or close to idle I think it was at idle so you can hear an engine in the background that's the JU-52 it's got its engines going so that what you're looking at there you, you can see I'm adjusting the prop pitch if you look carefully at that propeller you can see it moving and if you look at the instrument panel you can see the lights change color they're out they're extinguished now they were orange and then they turned green 
and now they're orange again and, and it's moving. So when you press right shift minus or right shift plus you get and that's provided that you've first of all selected manual prop pitch by pressing right shift and P. So right shift P to select manual prop pitch and then go ahead and adjust the prop pitch as you like by pressing right shift and minus or right shift and plus and you can adjust the prop pitch from 0% to 100%. I'm doing it here for both engines at the same time. You can probably do them individually somehow and there's a close up. So there's like a, there's like a, a switch there. So I guess in real life you would have reached out and grabbed one of those switches or both of them. There was probably a toggle to operate both of them from one or you could do them individually. I don't know how you could, if there was an indicator that told you what the prop pitch was set to or if you just did it by, R you probably did it by RPM I guess. So you could hear the tone of the RPM, the frequency of the sound change and you could, you could look at the RPM of the, the propeller, how fast it was spinning. There you can see the sp airspeed indicator right behind the control stick there. The 200 and the 300 that you can see there, that's the airspeed indicator behind the control stick. And so yeah, what you're looking at there is me manoeuvring the, the, um, the propellers prop pitch, the angle of attack of the propellers to their relative airflow as they swish through the air. And um, that's the fuel tank, fuel taps going on, and the magnetos. I'm about to start the engines. It starts with the left engine first. So what? Oh, so what? What happened there is that the engines were in a started configuration, and I've just shut down the engine there, and then I'm going to have to press E again to start the engines again, which I think I'm doing just now. There we go because the engine conked out of its own accord because I had the engines set, thus had the throttle set to idle while I'd advanced the prop pitch to 100%, which 100% prop pitch is effectively feathering the prop. So with those big paddles uh, whacking the air, there was too much uh, load on the engines at idle power and they just conked out. So now I'm restarting the engines. And what have I got the prop pitch set to? I think I've got it set to 0%. And from memory, in a minute, when the, both the engines are going, with the prop pitch set to 0%, I advance the throttle quite a bit, even at some point up to 100% throttle, just to see what happens. And um, I guess what I was trying to determine is, with 0% prop pitch, does the aircraft just stay stationary when you apply 100% power? And I've, I've Got a I found out the answer, which is that it doesn't stay stationary. With 0% prop pitch, it actually moves forward and it can actually take off with 0% prop pitch, which is what I'll demonstrate in just a minute. So there's the starboard engine going. And uh, look at that crosswind. So I'm facing the direction I'm facing now. If I were to take off like that, that's going to be into a a 15 knot crosswind coming from the left. If you look at the control panel, you can see I'm manipulating the prop pitch and just seeing what happens. You can get an indication of this audibly as well by listening to the change in the note of the engine as it increases or decreases load on the engine by the increase or decrease in the propeller pitch. Propeller pitch is like gears, so a fine pitch tending towards 0% is like first gear on a manual car and the, the reverse is true fifth or sixth gear is like uh, 35 40 percent prop pitch or 50 percent prop pitch and if you extend it fully you go to 100 percent prop pitch that's the same as feathering the prop 
I've written it down somewhere here. Let me grab my notes. There's a button combo that you can press. That's kind of into a. It's not. It's not a. It's a bit of both, isn't it? If I turn the aircraft to the right, then it'll take taking off into a crosswind. To feather the prop, left control plus F toggles on off for the feathering, apparently. So this is a takeoff with 0% um, propage into a crosswind. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep climbing and I'm going to go through the clouds and as I'm doing that I'm going to be adjusting the prop just to see what kind of results I get and you'll hear it in the sound of the engines. When I get above the clouds I feather the prop, cut the engine and I attempt to demonstrate the prop in its feathered configuration but the airspeed is high enough that the props keep spinning so unfortunately although they are feathered you, you can't sort of see that uh, I don't know maybe I did it wrong but uh, anyways we'll, we'll have a look at that in due course so the uh, the red orange lights are on and you can hear the change in the engine note. I didn't pull back on the throttle or anything. I just um, increased the uh, prop pitch by the sounds of that. In real life, there's a sequence that you follow for uh, increasing or decreasing the prop pitch, and um, there are limitations for uh, what you can do when, and it gets pretty confusing. I suppose I'd get used to it if I used a constant speed unit propeller every single day, but um, there's parameters beyond which you're not supposed to go in order to. Um, not uh, damage the mechanical systems. Uh, for, for example, if you're in a, just for example, if you're in a descent and you've got the prop pitch set to fine, like 0%, and then you go 100% power, uh, I think you might overspeed, you might overspeed the propeller mechanism and that might damage some parts of the mechanicals. In this game I haven't been able to experience any of those malfunctions uh, as yet. Uh, maybe they don't occur, I'm not sure. Maybe you have to adjust the setting in the settings for, um, for, for malfunctions. The general gist of a constant speed propeller is um, when you're climbing or when you're taking off or when you're landing you want a finer prop pitch, when you're cruising you want a coarser prop pitch and when you're descending as well, not descending for a landing but when you're descending at speed you want a coarser prop pitch equivalent to being in 5th or 6th gear in a, in, a, in a car. Looking at the engine instruments as I'm adjusting the prop pitch. You can hear the engine frequency increasing from the increased RPM as prop pitch goes finer. I think here I've got it set between 10% uh, or 0% and now I'm coarsening the prop pitch all the way towards 50%. Uh, see the speed's pretty low, I'm doing 200 kilometres now, it's not very fast.
And I think I decided that if you want to cruise along at the maximum speed with um, maximum power, what prop pitch do you need? You need 35% prop pitch. That's, I think that's what I concluded. So to cruise as fast as possible in a straight line, uh, horizontal, uh, straight loop, 35% prop pitch with full power seems to get you um, above 300 kilometers an hour in the, um, in the cruise. So here I'm climbing and I'm coarsening the prop there. And I think at some point I go full fine, so I'm climbing 0% pitch. Uh, and I'll break out on top of the clouds in just a minute. As you saw, just applying, I had it at about 80% power, just applying full power. A little bit difficult to climb through cloud without an artificial horizon in the instrument panel. Uh, time the only thing I can do to tell whether I'm climbing or descending or whatever is to listen to the note of the engine and um, to look at the airspeed indicator if the speed's increasing it means I'm in a dive if the speed's decreasing it means I'm nose up and, and so on and so forth So there we go, broken out on top of the clouds. Adjusting the pitch a bit here, going coarser. And as I say, I'm going to try and, wait. in fact, very soon I do uh, feather the props, 100% pitch, and cut the engine. What I was hoping to demonstrate by feathering the prop and cutting the engine was that classic image of looking out the cockpit window and seeing a stationary propeller uh, that's in, in line with the relative airflow. Unfortunately, all that I saw in practice was the propeller still continuing to spin uh, fast enough that I couldn't actually see uh, that it was feathered, although it was at 100% uh, pitch. So there you go, that's the engine off and the, the uh, pitch is 100% or feathered. And again you achieve that by first of all selecting manual pitch by pressing right shift P and then uh, pressing and holding right shift and then pressing and holding uh, the minus but button, uh, minus key on the keyboard until you reduce the pitch to your desired level. Or that, that's to get it down to zero if you want it to be feathered you have to press the plus button while you hold. so press and hold shift right shift that is and then press and hold the plus key on the keyboard and then you can increase the pitch to 100% pressing E to start the engine about now and then adjusting the pitch back to something uh, more uh, palatable
now adjusting the pitch uh, for a cruise and seeing what is the best pitch for a cruise. As I say, I determined it was about 35. Uh, at least that's what I think at this stage. After having flown uh, with manual pitch for half an hour, you can also cruise at 50% pitch. It's not an issue, but it's a bit like um, it's a bit like cruising in six gear. So if you six gear and you're going too slowly it's not such an appropriate gear to be in. Same same, 50% prop pitch is on the higher end if you're going slow. If you're cruising along fast or if you're in a power dive it's appropriate to have 50% pitch. Cruising back to the airfield now and I'm checking out prop pitches between 0% and 50% and I'm trying to shut the canopy. This video exists because someone requested it. If you have a video request, uh, send me a donation and uh, either on uh, Patreon or uh, through Bitcoin or Dogecoin or what have you and uh, let me know the theme or topic that you're requesting and I'll, I'll make something along those lines. make a one-off donation through cryptocurrency as it's called, that's Bitcoin and Dogecoin and so on, or you can make a recurring monthly donation of, uh, again, of any amount for both of them. Uh, you can make a, almost a symbolic uh, Patreon uh, donation of $1 per month, and um, just to show your support, uh, and in addition to being symbolic, it does help as well. Feel free to uh, donate a million dollars, uh, which is possible uh, as well. Look at those graphics, aren't they uh, fabulous? Cruising above this river here on the outskirts of Moscow, uh, heading back to the uh, to the airfield, where I do a landing with fine prop pitch, 0% prop pitch, and this is where I noticed that the landing in the final approach with 0% pitch was very sedate and controllable, um, much better than with automatic pitch. Imagine flying over the battlefield in this aircraft with this armoured uh, uh, bathtub uh, capsule uh, that the pilot uh, is ensconced within. I think it would have uh, felt quite safe to be flying in this aircraft. And you have that gigantic thick armoured glass windscreen in front of you as well. And the seat itself is uh, additional armour plate.
So that was a, a headwind landing. And uh, I did that one with manual prop pitch selected and 0% prop pitch. And it worked out pretty well. I was able to manoeuvre and so on uh, in a very sort of controlled way. The aircraft, I don't know if it comes through in the video, but the aircraft felt a lot more sedate in the final approach than with automatic pitch selected. So I think for landings in the future I'll pretty much always go for manual pitch and then something like 10% or 0% prop pitch just to give me that extra controllability. And this is then taxiing with 0% prop pitch. And you'll notice I don't think there's any further ground loops. We, uh, we have another uh, seven minutes of the, another six minutes of the video left now. I'm trying to remember what I did, whether I took off and did another circuit or taxied or I think I did another sir I think I did a takeoff into a crosswind and then taxi back to the hangar that I started at. If you can remember, that's roughly behind the aircraft. It's that giant hangar with the um, objects surrounding it, the uh, flak and um, some other things there. Just adjusting the aircraft's flaps. Green lights are on the dashboard and um, I've put the prop pitch I believe is 0% and I've got, I think I've got, yeah I've got full power here. Oh no it's a ground loop. So that's a, but it's a pretty sort of stable ground loop. There's not much velocity to the aircraft there. So that, that was, that was full power with 0% pitch. And that was where I established that the aircraft will start moving forward with 0% pitch on, on the ground. And mind you, that was at 100% power. So here we are, 0% pitch. The power is up. Full power. and uh, taking off into the wind, 0% pitch, full power, into the wind. And I believe the flaps are up. So actually, no, they're not, they're up, they're down, because the aircraft just sort of floated into the air, which I think I did on purpose, because I knew it was going to be a short field to take off. Raising the flaps about now. So that's a takeoff with 0% pitch. Not too bad, huh? Now I'm lowering, I'm coarsening the pitch, increasing the percentage into some kind of pitch that's appropriate to a cruise. You can hear the engine note dropped. So the engine note can be changing for two reasons. It can be changing because of an increase or a decrease in the throttle, or it can be changing because the um, uh, propeller RPM is changing as a result of the prop pitch changing, or a combination of both factors. There's the increase in RPM because we've got 0% prop pitch again. We're coming in for a final approach into the wind. 
once I'm on the ground I'm going to taxi left and go towards that giant hangar that you can see there or in fact I think I just fly right up to it so that's 0% problems now you can hear that high RPM I don't know if you can see it, but the aircraft is so stable with this high prop pitch in this final approach. Not really moving very fast, but um, very controllable, under power. And now getting the brakes ready. So right now I'm taxiing with a crosswind from the right. And this here is the starting point. We're back to back to home base. So there you go. With uh, crosswind, and even with all these objects, there's the Porsche motor car, there's the Henschel, there's the artillery piece, and there's the hangar. Even with all these objects around the place to hit, using uh, about 45% throttle, fine, zero percent prop pitch and using the tow brakes uh, and, you, and throwing the rudder in for good measure this combination makes it possible to, uh, to control the aircraft very well um, it took me about an hour I guess that you've watched here to, um, to sort of get in synchronisation with how this aircraft works but you can see I'm really controlling it with quite a bit of stability here and um, a fair bit of confidence so um, I, I learned something during that process and I hope, I hope you learned something too. I hope it was useful for you and, and that it helps you to um, improve your ground handling and your takeoffs uh, in the Henschel HS129. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Froggy Frog 9000 This video is the result of a donation through Patreon. If you want to make a Patreon donation or a donation through uh, Dogecoin or Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ripple or whatever, uh, feel free to do so and you can request a, uh, a topic for a video or a theme. Uh, don't forget to let me know what the theme is when you make the donation. Once again, thanks for watching. I've been FroggyFrog9000. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, smash the like button. Bye for now.